Hello everyone. Welcome back to Gelvin Valley. I know the past couple of episodes we've had in here have kind of had a modding focus and bent. And so now I'd like to get back to the business of farming. And you know what? It's pretty late in the evening, but we're still kind of working this field. So I was thinking maybe we would finish the field and then I would ask for a time to uh, to tomorrow so we could combine in the daylight um, I've already figured you know with some of the testing that we did it didn't uh, hit me too hard financially sometimes when you roll over time you know all sorts of things happen and you start getting charged <laughs> a lot of costs as they calculate interest on the bank loan and, and so forth so for the moment I apologize we're a little bit in the dark but uh, hopefully that'll be rectified soon Looks like our tractor is somewhat ready to go. Let me see here. Do you know who you are serving? All right, let me do that. He's... All right, no combine in reach. I'm trying to remember, did... Uh... All right, the combine isn't uh, full anyhow. So when uh, we roll time forward, um... I'll try to give the combine a good service. We'll get some fuel in it. I can see we're down to 145 liters so that it has everything it needs. And I was just checking that actually over here in this, uh, not in here, 1,029 liters in here. That should be good. You know, we've worked off of this tank for a long, long time. And part of it maybe is, <laughs> Part of it is when you rent a tractor or equipment, it comes with a full fuel tank, so that's kind of handy. Um, anyway, I guess we'll leave him seated there. We don't need our uh, wind rower just yet. Well, that's kind of a cool shot, watching him work the hill. Just love the skies in here, and you know, as soon as we turn the time over, it's going to give us a brand new sky. Oh, oh, you know what? We better go up and supervise. <laughs> supervise. Make sure this, uh, our beloved hired help on course play is going to properly. All right. He's doing it. Ah, I wish that stretched down just a little lower off of the combine there. Okay, head on down, and he should be taking it to storage, I believe. You see, how much does this indicate? All right, we've got 200, a quarter million liters in storage. You know, that's a fair amount of product that's going to take a long time. I think I'm going to, I'm going to uh, rent a truck. Look at the prices that are down. This is just, you know, it's par for the course. Farmers, a lot of times, this is one of the, the problems that they have. I think it's pheasant pluckers. Boy, that's just terrible. Oh, that's awful. You know, I don't want to sell it here. Um, I think I'd rather borrow more money to get my cash position back. But this is a problem farmers have all the time. You know, when you grow barley, it's wheat that you're supposed to have. When you grow wheat, you should have barley. You know, it, anybody that's watched this, and I, I wouldn't blame anybody if they haven't, you know, all these episodes. Early on when I started, I had a boatload of wheat, and everybody told me I should put in barley, or I know Eustace Farmer did. And, <laughs> well, now, uh, Atomic 67, I know you're no longer here. Um, I tried all barley, and it looks like I should have had wheat. In reality, when you study the code behind all this, it all should even out. Whether it's the yield between corn, canola, barley, or wheat, it all averages out. You know, just because you may get a higher price for canola, it's all random. It's all random because the ad is factored into the expected yields. You do get a higher price, but you also have a lower yield. And ditto with corn. I think it all is supposed to work together. 
it starts getting a little more murky as you get into some of the other commodities, potatoes and sugar beet. I, I believe, I, well, let's see here. Yeah, I just don't remember. One of them will earn a lot more than the other between potatoes and sugar beets. And of course, you know, the wild card can be having straw. You know, canola doesn't come with straw, which is why I've tended to have, uh, you know, most of my fields don't have canola in them. You know, and speaking of the straw, I was saying we didn't need this fella. Yes, we do. We're going to take him down here and start uh, heading around our field here. Yeah, I think I can beat you. <laughs> oh, that's right. I can drive through him, too. I'm so used to coming in here and just looking at the streams, thinking we have something to, uh, to test. But we don't, for once. All right, let's get this going. And we will take a strip around the field. I've periodically commented in here on some other YouTube channels that I watch um, or listen to. A lot of times I'm not able to watch, you know, with whatever I'm doing, I'm, but I am able to listen. So I really appreciate the fellows who talk, you know, when they do their videos versus just a time lapse or some of those kinds of things. Um, there's another one, uh, I haven't listened to him for a while, and I've recently kind of started listening to his videos again. You know, there's only so many hours in the day, and, and I know none of us take it personal, but when you have some other friends who are doing something similar, you know, whether it's YouTubing or whatever, you want to try to watch their videos, or I do anyhow. You know, I know my friends are are good enough to try to listen to my garbage, uh, the least I can do is listen to, to what they do. So I know I've mentioned uh, Russell in the past. I know, well, I just mentioned a little bit ago, Eustace Farmer. And, you know, I still go back. I watch his videos. I so badly wish he was still here with us. He just isn't. But uh, what he left behind is a wonderful legacy of, you know, his work, you know, that's still on YouTube and is wife is taken care of now. Uh, like I said, I mentioned Russell, you know, which uh, Eustace Farmer, I know he's a good friend with Eustace Farmer. And by the way, when I say Eustace Farmer and Atomic 67, it's one and the same. Uh, it's the same individual. Do I have a little bit of straw up in there? I gum, I do. That's interesting. Um, I must have burped when it was pointed back in there. Um, another one like I say that I've restarted listening to, it's, it's been a while, but I'm enjoying them, is, uh, let me see if I can get this right, I better pause. Driver2685. You know, I, <laughs> I wonder what the significance of the 2685 is. I'm sure it probably is something mean of, meaningful to, to Driver that, that, that I just don't know. But that's his channel name. I'll try to link it in here. I think I've linked some others in here before, you know, if you're interested. One of the reasons I enjoy listening to his videos is he, uh, I think he's a trucker in real life. So he tells a lot of stories, you know, kind of about his life, about trucking, you know, some of the things you encounter on the road. And I have a couple sons who are interested in the trucking industry, and I know one of them here the other day was uh, was basically saying, "Oh, it'd be so nice to quit everything, just get away, you know, so he doesn't have to go to school and just drive a truck." And you know, they're both kind of in love with the sound, smells, everything, the rumbles of a diesel engine, and yeah, I mean. To a lot of guys, uh, diesel engines are cool, no doubt about it. Um, but they've, they've commented that a number of times, and I've, I, I think I'm going to recommend that they listen to Driver2685's uh, videos because he gives a lot of information kind of about the trucking industry. 
um, you know, the, at, if someone was interested in it, things they need to consider or do, you know, if that's an industry they want to be a part of. But it's been interesting listening to, just to hear kind of what the at life is like. And, you know, I don't know how people in here are, I, I know I've, I've mentioned many times, I'm an accountant, you know, so every day I'm at a desk, typically. And so, you know, to, and to some people, the idea of being chained to a desk is just anathema. And, you know, I, I get it, um, but I guess the, the counter to the ad that I would say is it's uh, just because, you know, I don't get out of my office a lot and I'm, and I'm at the desk doesn't mean that I can't do that after hours or also doesn't mean that you know the nature of the businesses that I work with you know a lot of them which are in agriculture heavy construction those kinds of things you know I'm still involved in in some really cool industries and you know the perspective obviously that I see them isn't so much out boots on the ground literally doing the work um, but of course it's from a financial perspective and so that and that incidentally has colored my playing style in here too I, I do tend to look at this kind of as a business <laughs> although you wouldn't guess it looking at my pitiful cash position out ready to go broke you know well that's thank you Wild Wild Wes who made this map and he made it tougher nails but that's kind of another story. But even at a desk, you know, there is, um, I do get the high of uh, being somewhat involved in, uh, you know, through our clients, uh, these other industries, which have a lot more wow factor, if you will. So, I mean, that's that's part of why, you know, I would listen to a, a Driver 2685 or why a channel like his appeals to me is that is a lifestyle that uh, that I'm not part of, you know. I I don't sit in a truck all day or have to figure out or or uh, what that life is like. I do have a client or two in in our office who have trucking businesses, you know. So we we see it from again from a financial perspective. But it's just interesting to me to hear how different professions work. And I know there's a lot of YouTube channels out there where if you want to see what it's like a day in the life of a dairyman or a wheat farmer and you can find channels out that there you know the cater for comments so to, to that content and driver um, is a fellow uh, player of farming sim although I don't know that he I don't know that he's done much of that here recently um, it's uh, the videos of his that I tend to watch and get the most out of are his uh, where he's playing the American truck simulator I have that game too, but I, I, like I say, I'm not a trucker. It'd be even more laughable watching me play that than it is Farming Sim, if you can imagine. So, alright, let's see, I've gone, what kind of a path do I want? Let me open my, hmm, I don't know that I want to cut across the hill quite like that. So let me come over here and see what direction I can point it at. Let me try... Is that about right? Maybe I'll... No, that's still... <laughs> it's just snapping. Oh, hold on, hold on. We gotta go help our... Help a guy out. Our driver is parked right in the crop, the ditzel. And right in front of the combine to boot. So we'll move his rear out of the way. Actually, let's go to our combine now. Let's help him out and come up here just a little bit too. Oops. No, I didn't want to hire him. There we go. We'll take care of this little dab. So any more crop up here? Snap that little bit up. Won't do very much in cab. Let's see if I can turn around without hitting anything. I know I've got a tractor behind me. 
no mirrors. Look, mom, no mirrors. Get it going in here again. I wish I could fix that snap of the header. That's kind of kind of annoying. We got one more little dab at the bottom of the hill, but you know he probably isn't even going to finish filling the combine here with the rest of this. Um, but anyway. That's probably a reasonable enough of an angle, so maybe I'll try to snap the snap this out, get going. Start panning off over here. Of course, the first thing I'm gonna do is run right into our combine. This is probably the wrong angle. I don't know that I should technically do it uphill, but I think we'll have a square baler, so they'll hopefully stay on the hill. Should maybe wait right here while the combine turns around. I just love watching that thing work. Whoever did it did a wonderful job setting it up so that everything works properly. Of course. As uh, anybody seeing some of the earlier episodes will know, we helped it along a little bit, making a number of updates. Let's see, okay, he appears to be turning the other way, so we'll try to stay out of his way as best we can. So I've been enjoying Driver's uh, Channel 2 and he's been kind to field a number of questions and I don't know, I am just curious as all get out sometimes when I get something in my head, you know, whether it's, uh, I mean that's why I enjoy modding too, you know, where you have a project to take on to figure out how something works and can't rest until you have it figured out and have it work in the way you want it to work kind of what we went through with all those flood uh, script things. Um, so I've peppered him with a lot of questions. He's been very gracious in uh, fielding some of those and answering them then as he uh, does another a stream or another video. And, and I know that's part of it too. For those of us that kind of have the style in our, our YouTubing of chewing the fat, that's kind of a term that was coined by, and I've heard it before too, when I was a kid, chewing the fat. Uh, but it was a kind of a term put to it by uh, Eustace Farmer, where the style is playing the game and talking at the same time, just about whatever. Oh, our combine stop. All right, I'm going to take this up here. We'll park it at the top of the hill. I have to put the brakes on so it doesn't fall off the hill. All ready to go. All right. Lock her up. Turn it off. Head over to our combine. Yeah, it uh, finished up, didn't it? Dutifully locked itself. We'll turn downhill to make it a little bit easier. I think there's one teeny tiny piece left over here to go pick up. Hit back in cab. And of course, it's going to jerk it sharply uphill when I turn it on. It's just what it does. Alright. Bingo done. Okay. Love it that it beeps when it backs up. Let's head on down the hill. And we'll get it across the road. Actually, you know what? No. I'm going to stick it in the door here to hold the gate open. And I think, yeah, we're going to need to service it tomorrow morning. I'm going to turn it off. And this here can be turned off. Well, maybe I'll stop it. See, what I don't want it to do is accrue wages overnight. I'll just turn it off here for the moment. 
anything else on. There goes a car. All right, here it is. It's uh, terrible late at night. We've been harvesting faithfully. We can hear the crickets are out. We see the heavens are looking beautiful. And we're going to change it here in one fell swoop. So let's fast forward time. Yeah, see it changed the sky on us. We now have a new sky. One in the morning, two in the morning. And yeah, we're costing ourselves money with each... Uh, Alright, 4 a.m., 5 a.m. You know, this is as good a time to get going as any. So, let me go get our fuel. I'm going to haul it over here. We'll get the combine serviced. Go through all these tiny gates. Back to driver uh, 2685, um, like I say, he's been telling lots of stories which are interesting to me and not being part of the industry, you know, so I've given him tons of questions and I was starting to say, you know, as, as a fellow YouTuber with this style, sometimes it's hard to come up with, you know, ideas particularly of what to talk about. So hopefully I've given him a few so he can keep making the good old videos that uh, all of us enjoy um, just to hear kind of now oh, let's see can I yeah all right we're getting fuel in that's kind of the goal anyway but one of the stories he told uh, was just you know something from the life of a trucker that was a frustration that I never really thought about and you know, it has to do with a very natural thing that all of us need to do, which is to periodically use the head. I mean, it's just a reality. And you know, when you're in a truck, of course, I don't think, that would be an interesting question to ask him whether any trucks are manufactured out there that have a bathroom built into them. Uh, I don't know trucks, but I'm not aware of any, you know, and you know, I know, on the highways around here, there's a fair number of truck stops, you know, where they can stop and rest and, uh, you know, get showers and that kind of thing. Right, let me turn this off. Hopefully that's out of the way of traffic. I guess we'll find out. All right, we'll take you over uh, to get started on this field over here, which is treacherously steep. We'll wait till this fella goes. But apparently, he was commenting that a lot of truckers anymore, one of the problems that they have is there's uh, places that they deliver product to or pick up product from that, uh, for whatever reason, just aren't kind enough to let them use uh, the facilities. And, you know, here you've been in a truck all day, maybe you're... Uh, you're even squeezing your legs together trying to hold it all in and you're, you got a, a deadline to meet to get product from point A to point B and then you finally show up there and then they tell you you can't even use the doggone bathroom. I mean, it's some of that is baffling. You know, I get it and probably truckers are probably like, hey, 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 don't climb the hill. There's no need for that. They're probably like any other group of people. You're going to have good truckers. You're going to have bad truckers. You're going to have some in the middle. You're going to have good people, bad people, whatever. And it's probably some of those businesses, you know, where they're saying, hey, can't use a toilet. Probably have had some bad experiences, you know, that have led them to that policy or whatever. Um, but not all of them. And it seems a shame, you know, that you would cut off uh, all the good ones just because of a few rotten apples. I can't believe it would be even a majority. Or, and some people are so fastidious, you know, it, it's almost like they can look at certain professions, well, you're just a bunch of dirty people. Um, <laughs> or something like that. And you say, well, that's ridiculous. 
you know, it's kind of like looking at lawyers. You know, lawyers, for whatever reason, have a bad reputation, you know, where people look at them as a bunch of crooks or, you know, people who just try to get uh, their clients off when they've committed terrible crimes. Well, maybe there are some lawyers like that that have no conscience, but that's certainly not all of them, but yet they have that reputation. And I don't know, maybe maybe there's a certain number of people that look down their nose at truckers or farmers or, or whatever because because whatever bias they have. And maybe it's that where they say, no, I don't want you to even use our toilet unless you somehow defile it some, I don't know, who knows how people think. It's sometimes frustrating where we can get, uh, as a human race, get some funny ideas. But it just, it was, it made me think of a story in my own life that I'm gonna be half embarrassed, well, full on embarrassed to share, um, but I'll, I'll do it anyways, just because, hey, I'm a YouTuber and I need something to talk about uh, too. And I don't mind looking like an idiot because it was uh, real. You know, you talk about needing a place to go to the bathroom. We probably all, you know, had that experience where you gotta go and you gotta go now. And there's no waiting, you need to go now. And so I had one of those experiences uh, back in the day. Well, it's been a number of years ago. And some of it is due to my own um, health. You know, I got a brother who has Crohn's disease, uh, actually, and a sister too that has Crohn's disease, you know, where there's bowel issues. Um, yeah, that's kind of where this is going. <laughs> to where I think even my brother has a medical card that he can present to people that says, hey, this fellow has a, a medical issue. Would you be so kind to share your best room? Because if you don't, you know, it's gonna cause him some problems or whatever. Well, I maybe have something, I don't know. Uh, the doctors have never diagnosed me with anything, but I have had some times where I gotta go, I gotta go now. And when you're not in a place where you can do that, it's pretty tough on a person. And, you know, maybe an accident happens, maybe it doesn't. Uh, I don't think I've, I've had that happen. But it's a very realistic possibility, you know, in someone when you deny him that. I mean, it's. Anyways, we all know what that means. Stop! Dang, I just went downhill. I couldn't stop it. Oh, sorry, I'm just kind of driving through the crop here now. I couldn't slow down. I wonder what would happen if I had a lock there. Let me try this again. Maybe sometimes a key bindings just stick and they don't listen. I didn't think it was that steep a hill. Alright. Now, I kind of think I need a different route. This is field 36. Seven. So let me see what I got for 37. Combi to storage, and I believe it goes. Yeah, I'm gonna be driving over the crop a little bit. It goes in and out over here. All right. Well, hopefully that will work. Now, combi. Let me make sure I got the combi. I do. All right. It's gonna head over and do its thing. Let me get our combine going again. Anyway, I had an, uh, a time, you know, I'm, uh, I'm in accounting. I work in what's called public accounting. And occasionally we are called upon to audit a company, uh, company's books. And this is usually a choice they make or rather uh, they do it because someone told them they needed it, like a banker, you know, that they get a loan from uh, that says you need to, if you want a loan from us, you've got to give us audited financial statements or, or other reasons too that they would get an audit. Anyway, part of an audit is um, observing inventory. You know, that's where we literally go to see what they have on hand and make sure that what they say they have is exactly what they do have in fact. Tractor, you're going the wrong way, pal. Yeah, find the door, please. Will it find the door? 
Ah, it did. Good, 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 good. I really should go comma and strip through that video where he's driving, but anyways. So I was out uh, early one morning doing an inventory observation. This is typically at the year end of a company, uh, a company's books or their fiscal year. Um, that's when they typically count, do a deep dive into inventory for the sake of adjusting it on their financial statements or balance sheet, getting all that up to date. And so the times, oh, there's a beautiful sunrise. The times we would be called upon to do a an inventory observation are at year end and they don't like shutting the factory down or whatever, whatever's being counted for very long. So it tends to be in off hours. Anyway, it was early one morning. I was uh, headed up to go see this place and the further I went, the more I had to go. And I was out on country roads driving. There was no place to turn off. There was no town. There was no businesses open. Um, but as I got closer, I just had to go worse and worse. And I was, I mean, this, this sounds terrible to say, but I was like pushing my feet as hard as I could in, in the, in the, against the floor of the car, trying to hold, <laughs> hold off from an emergency or an accident happening. It was just awful. Well, finally, I connected up with another road where a client was, and I went by a, a lumber outfit lumber yard mill whatever it was and I pulled in there they happened to be open and I got the same response you know the driver two six uh, oh what's two six eight five now why would you turn around here you silly combine I got the same response they did you know I went in there can I please use your bathroom um, and they uh, they declined, you know. Sorry, we don't have we don't have a bathroom. Well, baloney! Every place has a bathroom. That's rubbish. That's a lie. Um, but anyway, they uh, declined. So what do you do? Well, here's the part that I'm I'm kind of really embarrassed about is uh, I had to go so bad that I I did it the old fashioned way. I was <laughs> they. <laughs> Beside this lumber yard, uh, there was only one car there, I think for the person in the office, at, at a little distance away. They had a bunch of tall grass weeds or whatever out in this open area, if you will. And I looked around to make sure nobody could see where I was going, coming. Guys, I went out the air and I took care of business out on the grass. And... I'm sure somebody got a surprise when they had to mow out there. But let me ask you, <laughs> what would you have done? Seriously, what would you have done? I couldn't think of anything to do. And, and like I say, I am blushing from ear to ear just to say this and admit that that's what I did. But I, I just couldn't hold it back any further. And it was either that or it was going my pants and I had a client to go to, so what in the world was I supposed to do? So anyway, that's kind of my story, which is triggered off of hearing what driver 2685 had to say. Hopefully he never had dire straits uh, kind of like that, quite the same way. But you know, you do what you gotta do. And right now, our combine, my gum, he may just get that emptied terribly steep in here this is treacherously steep so we'll see if he's able to get that unloaded but here we are in Galvin Valley early morning harvesting barley it's a wonderful day there goes the plane kind of through the valley we'll keep trucking in here on the next episode thank you so much for coming along y'all have a wonderful day goodbye